Hi, everybody. Now let's apply Burnside's lemma to accounting problem and see how it, uh, how it works out for us. So here's the problem from the text. You want to color the vertices of a square using two colors, and you want to count how many different ways you can do that. So just to uh, sort of put this in context, suppose you have a square. Here it is. And you want to put, let's say, red and you want to color the vertices red and green. And if we label these one, two, three, and four, I mean, at first glance, you might say, well, there are 16 different ways to do this because there are four vertices and I have two choices of color for each vertex. And that gives me a total of 16 um, possible colorings. So there are 16 possible colorings if you're not allowed to move the square, if the square just had to sit there. But if you're allowed to move the square, then some of these colorings are really the same as, as each other. Because, um, for instance, suppose you consider the two colorings where you take the square maybe here and you color the top ones red, color the top ones green, and we'll color the bottom ones red. Well, if we take the square and we rotate it 180 degrees, we're going to get the square, but now we're going to have the top vertices colored red and the bottom vertices colored green. And we want to count these as just one coloring. We want to say the two colorings are the same if there's a symmetry of the square which changes one into the other. And then we want to know how many different ways there are to do that. And we can rephrase that as a problem in group actions because we can think of a coloring is a function from the set of vertices to the set of colors. There are 16 possible functions, but we're going to say that two of these are the same if we can find a permutation or an element of d4 would be a better way to put it, not an arbitrary permutation, but a symmetry of the square if there's a G in D4, so that if I first do G and then do F, I get a different coloring, then we're going to say that F and H are the same. So in this example, if I let G be the rotation that I sometimes call R squared, which takes the square and rotates at 180 degrees. If you first do R squared and then do the coloring, you will turn one of these into the other and, and vice versa. So we're going to say that two colorings are the equivalent if they differ by the action of G. And this is the same thing as saying that two colorings are the same if they are in the same orbit. For this D4 action. So we have a 16 element set consisting of the colorings and we have a group acting on it. And the orbits are the one, any orbit corresponds to a single coloring because the collection of colorings in a particular orbit can all be obtained from one another by, by, by rotating or reflecting the square. And so the question we really want to know is how many orbits are there? And that's what Burnside is set up to tell us. It tells us that K, the number of orbits, is one over the order of the group times the sum of the elements in the group of the size of the fixed set. And in this particular context, the group is D4, so the order of G is 8. And these sets, what do they mean? Well, they're asking how many colorings, where by that I just mean labelings of the uh, of the edge of the vertices of the square with um, with colors, are fixed by each element of the group. 
So let's remind ourselves what the elements of D4 are. Well, there's the identity. There's the diagonal reflections. There are two of those. There's the midpoint reflections. There are two of those. There's the rotation through one and three, call them maybe R and R cubed. And finally, there's the 180 degree rotation, which we know is R squared is different because it's in the center. And what we want to ask is for each, so there's two here, and then there's one R squared rotation. And the question is, how do each of these group elements act on the ways that we label the, um, the square with colors? Well, let's think about the identity element first. The identity element doesn't move the square at all. So I can assign colors freely to the square. And if I take the square and then I change the vertices by the identity element, I get the same coloring back. So there are 16 colorings for the identity element that are fixed. What about these reflections across the diagonal? Well, when I reflect the square across the diagonal, whatever color I put here, I had better put the same color there. But I can put any color that I want here and here. Because when I flip the square across the diagonal, these two vertices are going to get exchanged. And if that's going to not change my coloring, those two have to have the same color. So how many choices do I have all together? I can put anything here. But I have to put the same on the two corners. So that's 2 times 2 times 2. Two choices for this vertex, two choices for this vertex, two choices for that vertex. So there are eight colorings fixed here. What about these reflections, which uh, act through the, uh, the midpoints? Well, they're a little bit different because they interchange these two vertices and these two vertices, or else these two vertices and these two vertices. So let's take one of them, for example. Whatever color I put here, I have to put here. And whatever color I put here, I have to put here. So I really only have two choices. I can put red here and green here, red here and red here green here and green here, green here and red there. So there's, and once I decide what goes on these two vertices, these two vertices, this one and this one, it determines what goes on those two. And if I was doing the, the, the reflection this way, then whatever I put here and here would determine what I have here and here. So there are four colorings fixed here for each of those two elements. What about the rotations? Well, the rotations by one step, let's say I make this one green. When I rotate by one element, whatever color I put here, I have to have the same color here. Whatever color I put here, I have to have the same color here. Whatever color I put here, I have to have the same color there. And similarly for R cubed, if I go in the other direction, whatever color I put here, I have to have here. Whatever I put here, I have to put here, and so on. In other words, I only have two choices. I have to either color them all red or they're all green. So there are two colorings fixed here. And then finally, I have the 180 degree rotation. And that takes the, this vertex here to this one and this vertex here to that one. So whatever color I put up here, I have to put here. And whatever color I put here, I have to put there. So again, there are four colorings fixed here. Now remember, I'm summing over all elements of the group. So I have one element that gives me 16, two elements that give me 8, two elements that give me 4, two elements that give me 2, and then one more element that gives me 4. And this is the sum of the fixed points. And it works out to be 16 plus 16 plus 8 plus 4 plus 4, right? 16 plus 16, 
which is 48. But remember, the order of our group is 8. It's the dihedral group. And so the number of orbits that we get by Burnside's lemma is 6. So we get by Burnside's lemma that k, which is 1 over the order of g sum xg, is 48 over 8, which is 6. So there are six different ways up to symmetry to, cover, to color the vertices of the, um, of the square. And uh, you might amuse yourself by trying to figure out what they are. Um, two of them are what you get if you color all the vertices red or all the vertices green. So you really only have to find the other four. And uh, that's a kind of a fun exercise. Let me give you one other, uh, another example of how you can do this uh, counting problem. So a graph is a collection of dots connected by line segments. And um, this, isn't the sen this isn't the meaning of graph in the sense of the graph of a function. This is the meaning of graph in the sense of graph theory. And they're very simple objects. Um, you make, you take a few points and you connect them by lines. And suppose you want to know how many graphs are possible with three vertices. And again, if you think about this for a moment, given three vertices, there are, um, let's label the vertices one, two, three. Um, you can, for instance, have the graph with no vertices. That's one of them. Sorry, no edges. How, how many? Uh, so we have three vertices. You could have no edges. That would be one. Or you could take this graph, which just has one edge, joining one and two. Or you could take the graph, which has just one edge, joining one and three. Or the graph that just has one edge, joining two and three. But the only difference between these three graphs is how you've labeled the vertices. The graphs themselves are the same. So let's say that two, two graphs are their equivalent. If you get one from the other, just by renumbering the vertices. Well, you can approach this very much in the same way as we did with the square by thinking about taking the triangle and coloring in the edges, either plus or minus, where plus means it's there, and minus means throw it out. And then when you want to count up the number of um, graphs, what you're doing is you want to count uh, the number of such colorings up to the symmetries that you get by rearranging the names of the, of the vertices. So there are how many, um, in this case, there's only three possible edges. The only possible edges are 1, 2, 2, 3, and 1, 3. So the set of edges has three elements. And the possible labels are plus or minus. And so the total, I mean, the, the sort of first count that you get is that there you have three choices of plus or minus. So there are eight um, labeled graphs. That is to say, um, and you can even think about what they are. There's, there's the one with no edges. There's three that have one edge. There's three that have two edges. You just choose which one you omit. And then there's one which has three edges where you connect up everything. But once again, you can have the group action. But now we're permuting the vertices. We're, the group is S3.
And if you have a labeled graph, that's a function from the space of edges to the space of labels, plus or minus. And the action, again, is you change f by a permutation, and that's equivalent to another function. You want to count the orbits. And we use Burnside's theorem again, and we have to look at S3. And what are the elements of S3? Well, there's the identity element. There's one of those. There's three transpositions, and there's one, there's two three cycles. How many um, graphs are fixed? So now we want to look at which which, which graphs are fixed. So the way we're thinking about that here is we have our little triangle and we're putting pluses and minuses on the edges of our triangle. And since E doesn't move anything, we can assign the pluses and minuses completely at will and it will be fixed by the action of the identity element. And so there are three, uh, there are uh, two possibilities for each of these three things, two times two times two. So there's eight uh, fixed by the identity. What if you interchange two of the vertices? Well, that means, let's say these two vertices get interchanged. Well, here's the third one. These two edges get identified with one another. This edge just flips back and forth. So you can put anything, you can either keep this edge or leave it, up to you, so that's two choices. But if you keep this edge, you got to keep this one. And if you throw this edge away, you got to throw that edge away. So there's only two choices here. So you get uh, four fixed by this uh, by the transpositions. And finally, you have the three cycle. The three cycle takes the edges and cycles them around. So if you want to be fixed by the three cycle, you either have to be plus 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 or minus minus, minus, so there are two possibilities. And now if you use um, Burnside's lemma, you see that you should count sum over g order of xg. So it's the identity, which gives you eight. There's one identity, and it gives you eight. There's three transpositions, and they each give you four. And there's two three cycles, and they each give you two. So that's eight plus 12 plus 4 is 24, and we're dividing that by 6, and there are therefore four orbits. And in this case, we do know what the four orbits are. They're this graph, this graph, this graph, and that graph. So there are four different uh, equivalence classes uh, up to rearrangement of the vertices of graphs on three vertices.